In the event of a fire, it's important to know the proper procedures to follow because fire is fast, blazing fast. In less than 30 seconds, a small flame can grow into a major fire. And guess what? That's not the time to start learning where the exit is. So crank your AC to high because things are going to get hot as we learn how to identify different classes of fire, how to recognize hazardous conditions and the appropriate actions to take before such conditions result in a fire emergency and what to do in the event of an actual fire. We'll also examine several examples of fire and life safety hazards in the workplace. This may seem like a lot, but we'll do our best to keep you engaged throughout this entire module. We are dedicated to your ongoing safety. In addition to this training module, we conduct life safety audits, fire incident investigations, fire exit drills, fire safety inspections, hands-on fire extinguisher training, and other survival skills strategies. How does a fire start anyway? For a fire to occur, three elements are necessary. First, a fuel source. Fire needs something to burn, such as a solid, liquid, or gas. Second, an adequate oxygen supply. There needs to be a sufficient supply of oxygen to keep a fire burning. And third, heat or an ignition source, something to start the fire. When all three elements are present, they cause a chain reaction which results in combustion or otherwise known as fire. These can be remembered as the fire triangle. Not all fires are the same. In fact, there are five classes of fire and each requires a specific extinguisher. Before using an extinguisher, be sure to take note of the classification on the label. Using the wrong type of extinguisher can be life-threatening. Portable fire extinguishers are extremely handy, but they should only be used against fires at their initial stages. Once the fire starts to grow, it's best to evacuate the building. Extinguishers should never be viewed as substitutes, but rather as complements to automatic fire detection and suppression systems, such as fire alarm systems, smoke and heat detectors, and fire sprinklers. Okay, so let's check out each class of fire and which extinguisher to use. A Class A fire consists of ordinary combustibles. A Class A fire extinguisher contains water to remove the heat from the fire by cooling it. A Class B fire occurs when flammable or combustible liquids ignite. A Class B fire extinguisher contains dry chemicals to smother the fire. A Class C fire involves energized electrical equipment. A Class C fire extinguisher contains an agent that is non-conductive, such as carbon dioxide. A Class D fire occurs when the fuel is a combustible metal. A Class D fire extinguisher contains dry powder to smother the fire. A Class K fire occurs when cooking oils and fats ignite, usually in commercial cooking areas such as restaurants and cafeterias. A Class K fire extinguisher contains a dry and or wet chemical mixture, which forms a soapy foam to suppress the fire. Now it's time for the hot seat. Can you match the correct extinguisher to each class of fire? Awesome job, you fire genius you!